Next, you need to design for the shear resistance of the pad foundations. There are two types of shear resistance, which are the vertical shear at 1D from the column face, punching shear at the perimeter 2D from the column face, and also the punching shear at the column perimeters. We shall look into this one by one. First, we look at the vertical shear at the shear plane of 1D from the column face. These are the formulas that you can use for the checking. You need to determine the shear force generated by the soil pressure acting at this area. First, determine the locations of the critical shear plane. It is placed at 1D from the surface of the column. The D here is determined earlier on equals to 607mm which is indicated here. You need to determine the stress at these regions which can be obtained through interpolations between these two values with respect to the critical shear plan here. It is found to be equals to 175 kN per meter square. The total shear loads will be determined by the resultant force of the stress here to be multiplied with the area here which is equals to 2.5 meters times 0 0.968 meters. This is determined by minusing half of the base with half of the size of the column and also 1D. Based on the area here, multiply with the resultant force of the stress generated here, you will get the vertical shear loads. Your vertical shear load here needs to be checked against the shear resistance based on the formula here. There are two components, VRDC and also VRDC mean. You will need to compute the K, which is in the functions of D, Based on the formula given here, the K will have to be less than 2.0. It is found to be 1.57. Next, you have to determine the percentage of reinforcement bar. The AS1 here refers to the provided area of the reinforcement bar. BD here refers to the sectional plan of this critical section here which is 25000 times the depth of the reinforcement bar 607 you get your row 1 to be equal to 0 0.002 which is less than 0 0.02 the number is adopted substitute the relevant value into the formula you get 488.9 kN. Also find the VRDC minimum based on the formulas here. The K value has already been computed earlier on. Substitute into the equations, you get 522.4 kN. Your shear resistance will be the larger value of the two which will be 5 to 2.4 kN. This to be checked against the shear loads that you calculated earlier on. And you know that when it is greater than the load, your shear resistance will pass. Next, you need to check the punching shear stress at the perimeter of 2D from the surface of the column. You may use these formulas for you to calculate the results. First, you need to determine the average D, which is the average value of DX and DY, and it is found to be 599mm. 
to this will be equals to 1198 as calculated from here now we are looking at the parameters of an offset of 1198 and m from the column face the perimeter length of u is determined by the perimeter of the column plus the perimeter of a circular circle with the radius of 2d that gives you at 7 to 7 mm next you need to determine the area within the perimeter this is calculated by adding the area of the column plus this area this this and this area plus the area of the circle with the radius of 2d you know that you need to determine the ved caused by the bearing stress of the soil acting at the shaded region here which is outside the perimeter length of this 2d Therefore, you need to determine the area of the outside the perimeter length here. This is determined by having the area of the base minus the area within the perimeters of 2D. That gives you 2.716 meters square. Your punching shear force is determined by multiplying the outer area of the perimeter to d with the average stress of the maximum and minimum bearing pressures caused by the soil the average value it will be this plus this divided by 2 that will give you the average punching shear force of 463.3 kN. Having the shear load defined, you will need to determine the punching shear stress. You have the perimeter length of 2D as computed here, and you have the D computed also as an average of dx and dy now you need to determine the beta you know that the foundation now have the moment acting on it you will need to use these formulas for you to compute the beta you will expect beta is going to be greater than 1 due to the summations of this component med here now is 50 VED here is this the U refers to the perimeters of 2D from column face and W1 is computed from this formula there are C1 and C2 in the formula C1 refers to the directions of the columns parallel to the directions of moment rotations while c2 is perpendicular to the moment rotations that gives you c1 equals to 350 and c2 equals to 250 mm dividing c1 over c2 you get 1.4 refers to the table here you can use interpolations for you to determine decay at 1.4 it is calculated as 0 0.66 substitute the c and d into the equations for w1 you will get this substitute the value into the equations for beta you will get beta equals to 1.08 your shear stress is determined by this formula which after substitutions you get 0.096 newton per mm square having the VED determined you will need to check it against the resistance of the punching shear 
based on the formula here. The VRD per C mean is determined based on this formula when it is divided by B and D you will get the resistance in terms of the shear stress the K here has already been computed in the previous calculations of 1D from the calling surface then you will get your shear resistance 0.349 Newton per mn square the resistance is found to be greater than the loop that means your punching shear is acceptable.